The Book Summary of Jack Wells General Electric Way by Robert Slater. Robert Slater's book is an inside account of General Electric's history since Jack Wells became Chief Executive Officer in 1981. Under Wells' direction, General Electric made great strides in the economic community, both domestically and internationally. Wells is considered to be the toughest boss and the most admired manager in the United States. Although this is a company biography, it also contains hands-on advice that will serve any company well. It teaches companies how to restructure and how to make their employees more enthusiastic. It offers advice on how to change management and gives many examples of specific ways to help a business become a leader in its field. This well-written, well-organized book is easy to read and very entertaining. Chief executive officers who want to take their companies to a higher level should study it. Today's business leaders can learn a lot from the lessons of Jack Wells. Some key points from this book. Jack Wells is considered the toughest boss and the most admired manager in the United States. Simplify your business as much as possible. Don't overcomplicate it. Business is essentially simple. Fight bureaucracy. Act like a leader, not a manager. Manage less. By doing so, you manage better. Always ask the famous Peter Drugger question. If you weren't already in the business, would you enter it today? If the answer is no, Wells' motto is to fix it, close it, or sell it. If the answer is yes, you want to be number one or number two in the industry. Find out who has the best ideas and implement them. Delayer your organization. Remove whole layers of management. Get rid of conventional receipt budgeting. Instead of thinking about how little money there is, find new ways of spending it. Focus on the service and of the business. Strive for quality, not in the conventional sense, but to be the world's quality leader. Now I'm gonna tell about summary of this book. America's most admired manager. Jack Wells is the CEO of General Electric Company, one of the world's most profitable companies. In the United States, he is considered one of the six most influential people, the toughest boss and the most admired manager. Wells took over General Electric in 1981. By 1990, General Electric had transformed into the most powerful company in the United States. The company's most market capitalization made General Electric the most valuable corporation in the world at that time. The company is now more service-oriented than manufacturing. It retires a few years from now. It still produces light bulb, refrigerators, locomotives. General Electric competes in many major international industries, including aircraft engine 
appliances, capital services, lighting, medical system, media, and power systems. Wells has made General Electric a global powerhouse. He expects the co company to generate the majority of its revenues from overseas. There is some quote I will tell you. Find great ideas. Exaggerate them. And spread them like hell around the business with the speed of light. Jack Wells instituted as atmosphere in which all 12 of General Electric major businesses learn and share with one another. Wells does not assume that he knows it all. To the contrary, he is always learning. He loves to learn. He believes an organization can always learn something from its competition. He enthusiastically communicates with employees. Well, seven messages. Jack Wells has seven main messages he often conveys as a public speaker. Number one, business is simple. Number two, don't make it overly complicated. Number three, face reality. Number four, don't be afraid of change. Number five, fight bureaucracy. Number six, use the brains of your workers. Number seven, discover who has the best ideas and put those ideas into practice. We want to make our qualities so special so valuable to our customers, so important to their success that our products become only real value choice. From the court of Jack Wells. Wells puts these messages into practice. Under Wells, General Electric fosters employee learning and idea sharing. This new attitude toward incorporating learning from all sources improved General Electric's performance. Wells urges companies to face the truth and realities of their businesses. Firms should act quickly, decisively, and should be as honest about their faults as their virtues. By being consistent, he believes you can change people's mind about your company. Delaying General Electric From the very moment Jack Wells took over the leadership of General Electric, he viewed the company as a bureaucratic dinosaur. He knew, he knew General Electric had to change to stay competitive. So, in the early 1980s, he started by dismelting, dismantling general electric businesses which were not leaders in their field. When a company examines its business, it has to ask the famous Peter Drucker question, if you weren't already in this business, would you enter it today? If the answer is no, Wells' motto is fix it. Close it, sell it. If the, answer, if the answer is yes, then you want to be number one or number two in that industry. Another quote. I have no idea how to produce a good television program, but I do know who is the boss at NBC is. And that is what matters. It is my job to choose the best people and to provide them with the dollars. Jack Wells' leadership turns his managers into inspirational leaders. He gives junior managers more responsibility and allows employees to have real contact with their managers. 
instead of just writing memos, the managers now talk and brainstorm with their employees. Jack Wells wants manager to spread enthusiasm like wildfire. He removed the boundaries between management, engineers, marketing staff, between General Electric and its customers, between full-time and part-time employee, and finally between General Electric and local community. The workout program. Well, stone down old buildings and improved the remaining ones. He built new plants for General Electric bus new businesses, which replaced the old one. Income and earnings rose as a result of these measures. After downsizing, Wells knew that the remaining employees were afraid of losing their jobs. To make them feel more secure, Wells started a new program called Workout. Every layer is a bad layer. The world is moving at such a pace that control has become a limitation. It slows you down. That's another quote. The goal of this 10-year program was removing the boss element in General Electric and encouraging all employees to contribute new ideas. Wells wanted the remaining managers to have more communication with employees who weren't managers. He wanted most of the decision-making to be done by the employees, not the managers. He knew this method would dramatically empower this, his employees. Another quote, numbers aren't the vision, numbers are the product. We always say that if you had three measurements to live by, they had be employee satisfaction, customer satisfaction, and cash flow. The workout program had two main components. First, suggestions and ideas from employees were to begin to give in to their managers face to face. If possible, manager had to respond on the spot. Second, Wells held meetings off-site and had employees and managers from all sector dress very casually for them. This created an atmosphere of sharing. Workout encouraged people to speak up, and they did. Managers had to learn to let the employees criticize the business. Well, Wells knew it was a risk, but he did it anyway, and it worked. New performance targets were set and achieved. General Electric quit doing quite doing conventional reset budgeting instead of thinking about um, how little money that there was. People began to find new ways of spending it. He says, dreams are exciting, decimal points aren't. General Electric began announcing a new product every 90 days. General Electric now can design and complete projects in half the time that new launches used to take. Businesses within General Electric produced more and worked faster than ever before. Once the business was simplified, the managers become more enthusiastic and energetic. Wells fostered an atmosphere of self-confidence. Concentrate on the service end. General Electric's primary focus had always been manufacturing. Wells changed that. He began focusing on service. According NBC in 1985, obviously influenced this change. Wells believes that service-oriented businesses are the right concentration for the new millennium. 
When you are got people in a job for 15 years, they get still. They're dead. Only they don't know it. In 1990s, 56% of General Electric was manufacturing oriented. Five years later, the manufacturing center sector was only 43%. Now, instead of just making locomotives, General Electric offers railway customers something new. Computer-based dispatching system. General Electric uses technology to help it make the switch to a more service-oriented business. General Electric is still a major manufacturer and has no plans to become a service-only company. But its emphasis has changed from manufacturing to service. One of the quote, it, I like that quote. I want General Electric to develop a big company body in a small company soul. It's a very deep word. Financial services have become another component of General Electric's business. General Electric began offering financial services by lending money to customers to buy General Electric products, such as washing machines. Today, the General Electric credit company has become the General Electric capital company. By offering custom consumers many financial service products, it has contributed immensely to GE's revenue growth. The company finances cars and equipments, delivers services through the internet, sells insurance and mutual funds, and issues more commercial paper than any other U.S. company. Top quality. Quality drives every general electric business, whether national or international. Whether electric or financial, Wells believes quality will make General Electric more competitive company on earth. Because quality creates customer satisfaction, Wells wants General Electric to produce the highest quality product in the world and thus to be most competitive. To add end, he instituted the Six Sigma program. The program lists four steps to improving quality. Measurement, analysis, improvement, and control. Wells is close to achieving the program's goal, reducing the number of errors in products to nearly nothing. Every General Electric employee is involved in this process, which saves time as well as improving quality. Many areas have improved. For example, the time it takes to answer a service call and repair a locomotive motive. Since Wells implemented the Six Sigma program, the results have gone far beyond his expectation and the success continued to snowball. Integrity. In spite of General Electric recent successes, one problem has continued. Ethical lapse. In 1985, the federal government accused General Electric of filling incorrect taxes and laying to the government about work it had performed. After that, other ethical problems emerged. In 1989, General Electric was sued in civil court by people who accused the company of issuing faulty time cards. In 1994, a General Electric's T-bond trader shows $350 million in false profits. Wells issued a book about integrity, ordered all general employees, general electric employees to read it and to tell management they had read it. The book is now issued annually and ethical practice has become general policy at General Electric. An employee who violates Ethical standards is immediately fired. Violations are not tolerated. Training and Development Campus General Electric is proud of its Leadership Development Center 
a campus for junior and senior management. The courses are informal and encourage candor among employees. Wells loves going there because it gives him a chance to learn directly from his managers. When he visits, he makes a point of having at least one personal conversation with each attendee. He asks questions, gives a presentation and answered, answers questions. If he doesn't know the answer, he says, so? Then he has dinner with his managers by talking with managers who are close to his employees. Wells learns more about General Electric business. General Electric's future. What does the future hold for General Electric after Jack Wells retired a few years from now? Wells will, of course, choose a successor he has trained personally, someone who shares his vision and values. Wells sell, says there is no limit to ways General Electric can continue growing and being profitable as long as its learning culture continues to thrive. He does not believe that breaking up General Electric and spining off its components is a viable alternative. He constantly strive, strives to make things simpler. He is decided to quali dedicated to quality, which will continue to be a main theme for the next several years. General Electric is hiring more people now, and Jack Wells is proud of that. However, he doesn't apologize for laying off so many people in the 1980s. He says, General Electric's vision for the next century is to be good, to be a global service company that also sells high quality products. In 1998, 17 years after Jack Wells took over, Fortune magazine called General Electric the most admired company in in. United States of America. Thank you so much to listening to me.